Oscar Bevis, IFL TV, proudly sponsored by Valas here in London, head of a massive fight night, British and Commonwealth titles, Luke Willis, Gavin Gwynn, Lee, and joins me. How are you, mate? I'm very well, mate. How are you? Very good, very good. Looking forward to Friday yeah, because, as said in the press conference, by the way, this is an arena fight and we've managed to get it at York Hall, live on IFL TV. Um, this is a big, big fight. Yeah, no, 100%. It's a, it's a great fight. Obviously, Gavin Gwynn's fought uh, for the British title twice. Luke Willis has fought on, on a big under, on a big arena show last time against Ryland Shulton. So that it is British and Commonwealth title fights are more of an arena fight. Obviously, we've brought it to your call. Obviously, we've also got an English title on the line, and we've got two um, two females fighting in a 50-50 fight. We've got three, four, maybe five of the best prospects in well in British boxing on the undercard. So, listen, it's a great, great show. I'm really looking forward to it. Yeah, it just showed the strength of where these MTK shows are at the moment. The fact that you talk about fights that could be on arena cards, and we're talking about free-to-air fights on YouTube that are. Yeah, arena worthy fight. Yeah, hundred percent. Listen, some of the prospects that we have on our shows really could could be on these big bills and stuff like that. So it just shows the obviously the credibility of our shows. Uh, obviously, to have a British and Commonwealth English title. Obviously, two we've got two eight rounders of very good prospects. Then you've got Elliot Wow, Carl Fowl, Jimmy Croxon, Dean Richardson. Uh, and then Paul Ryan, all on the undercard. Obviously, it's it's going to be a blind eye. I'm really, really, I'm buzzing for this show. And talking about the main event and how it could potentially play out as well, Luke Willis is one of them. Does what he says on the tin. I think if you saw what he done against Ryland Cholton, I could imagine he's going to go in with that same game plan. And I can imagine Gavin's thinking the exact same. But if Gavin makes it scrappy. That could be um could be serious. Yeah, listen, uh, first time I've met Luke Willis tonight, as it goes. Uh, lovely, isn't he? Lovely today. Uh, yeah, what a lovely fella. Um, and do you know what? Listen, he come up to me, thank, thank you for the opportunity and stuff like that. Things like that go a long way in, in boxing. Um, he, he believes that he's coming on with them titles. He's got nothing else in his mind that he wins that fight. It, listen, he could be three, four, five rounds up after a few rounds, uh, after five, six rounds. But Gavin Gwynn is not come into play. He is going to be in that fight. He is going to be on that front foot all night long. Yeah. Um, can he withhold the pressure after five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten rounds? Who knows? But listen, Friday night we're going to see, live on IFL TV. I can just see from you talking to the team how much it would mean if Gavin, third time of asking, can win this British title as well. Yeah, 100%. Listen, me and Gav have been mates for a couple of years. Obviously, only just signed him recently. Um, to get him a British and Commonwealth title fight in his first fight is unbelievable for, for us as obviously our, our working relationship. Um, and I know how much it would mean to him uh, and his family. So I've seen, his, I've seen videos of his little boy running around with the Commonwealth title wrapped around him. I want to see that British title wrapped around him. Yeah. And in terms of the fact that it's at lightweight as well, with a division like that with so many big names at the top, if you come out with the British and Commonwealth, a big fight in front of you, you're only really ever two or three big fights away from securing life-changing money. We're talking like Vegas fights. It sounds ridiculous to say it, but you are only ever two or three fights away. Yeah, listen, look at Maxi Hughes. Listen, Maxi Hughes went and beat John O'Carroll. Then he, then he went to Dubai and beat Victor Kotachikov, yeah, for WBC International. Three weeks' notice when he won the British title. His next fight after the British title was for the IBO World title. And then now he's defended that. And now he's going to, they're talking of him fighting, obviously, Ryan Garcia. Do you know what I mean? You're always only a couple he's of He's going to be getting a ringside seat at Cambosas Haney. Do you know what I mean? Come on, it's mad what boxing can do. We have a good team around you and stuff like that. Listen, with um, Maxi, before that fight, uh, before Jojo Diaz and Haney got done, we, we'd agreed the uh, Devin Haney fight. We was going to Las Vegas for him to fight Devin Haney. Um, so right, there's massive opportunities. Go win that British and Commonwealth title at that weight, 
And even like, obviously, I know it's another, it's a way up, but look, Sam Maxwell's fighting for the IBO world title at uh, 140. Jo Joe Cordina has got a world title fight at 130. It, there's so many other opportunities out there for fighters. And it, listen, at the minute, with so many the broadcasters, you've got obviously DAZN, Sky, BT, just obviously, it's just endless for fighters. And it's an exciting time in British boxing. Yeah, yeah I cannot wait for the main event on Friday night, and whoever wins is going to go on to some big, big stuff. Denmark. Um, talk to me. I want to know the Denmark Chronicles, the stuff behind the stuff. I want to know what really went on, Lee. I want to know the nights out, the story. Uh, we're talking about the boxing. <laughs> <laughs> no, obviously, listen, Denmark, obviously, went over there for Dina Forsland, defending her world title. Dina Forsland is an absolute animal, I'm telling you. Um, I believe she's the best 118-pound fighter on the planet. Um, she... I, I'd love her to get the uh, Ebony Bridges fight, Jamie Mitchell fight, or the Luna fight, the WBC champion. If, if none of them are going to step up, if, uh, none of them want to unify, then obviously we'll, we'll move up. We'll move up to £122. Or even there's a, a Danish fighter called Sarah Mayford, who's an unbelievable fighter. She's the IBF world champion at £126. Um, that is a stadium filler, a 15,000, 20,000 stadium filler in Denmark. So, listen... She, she deserves a big fight now, but after, listen, she's a little machine, so I, I, there's not many people queuing up to fight her. What's the scene like out in Denmark? Because obviously since there were big fights in Denmark, kind of like eight, ten years ago, yeah. um, with, with Mikael Kessler, I just want to know kind of what the scene's like. Because when I saw you out in Denmark, it looked like a packed arena. It looked like, yeah. from the videos I saw, it was quite noisy. It looked like it's, it's, it's a bit buzzing out there. Yeah, no, it was good. Uh, obviously, we had um, Alex Del Magani on the undercard. Also, for show savers, we had Thomas Asombo who got, his first, got show savers first win. Well done, Thomas. Um, but it is the venue. They sold 2,500 tickets in the 3,000-seater uh, 3, stadium. Um, and it was rammed it like it was it was bouncing in there. Um, really, they love their boxing out there. It's a nice, lovely country, clean, um, good nightlife. We'll talk about that another day. <laughs> no, listen, Joe. I really enjoyed myself. You know, obviously to be around Dina during that. Obviously, her ring walk and everything like that. See the photos and the videos and that. It's it's a great place for boxing. And is Sonny Edwards coming for your job? Sonny Edwards is not coming for my job. We're wingmen now, aren't we? Yeah, we are. <laughs> oh, so that's how Denmark went. Um, one thing I do have to ask you just finally is we're sort of going into Tyson Fury, Dillian White fight week. Um, a strange build-up, if anything, not the one that we was expecting, definitely. Just sort of from the announcement of the fight till now, just sort of your take on what's been a quiet but not quiet sort of month. Very, very, very odd. Uh, for Dillian not to turn up and then just to be, there's been nothing, n nothing, no media or anything really. Obviously Tyson always goes into his shell during uh, fight, uh, fight camps, obviously to prepare himself to go into obviously war and stuff like that. Listen, uh, Tyson's just an unbelievable professional when he's, when he's, re when his head's screwed on and he's, he's ready to go and that's, once he's got that fight date, that's him. He's head screwed. He's, he's ready to go. I'm um, really looking forward to it. I really hope, obviously, things go well on fight week. And I believe Tyson Fury comes out a winner. It could stop him. But, listen, Dillian's an unbelievable fighter as well. But I believe, obviously, Tyson is the best heavyweight on the planet. Do you take much from Dillian's silence in terms of how it could work going forward? No. Well, listen, he, listen Dillian's a professional. He, he's... Um, an unbelievable fighter. He's been in these big fights before. He's just going. He's just in camp doing, shutting himself off, um, and he'll be bringing a proper fight on the on twenty third. Get knocked, Sparta! <laughs> no heart needed. Welcome, Team Everlast, to the Team Everlast Fitness. Hey. Download the Everlast Fitness app and find your greatness within.